Monitoring Spirits, Part 2. Hello again, thank you for being here with me once more, I hope you are happy and very well today. I am Murray. This information can be seen as science fiction, or as the viewer sees best, and I post it for entertainment purposes only. Still, I take my information very seriously, and for whoever has eyes to see. As I have been explaining in other videos about paranormal and astral subjects, there is a lot more out there than what meets the eye, much more than what science on earth violently pushes, as a materialistic and deterministic reality. This is the second part of monitoring spirits, I suggest you see the first part as well, as I explain some important concepts there, which may be useful to understand the ones that will follow here. How do I know all this, you may ask? I am a member of a culture which has much more detailed and advanced knowledge, not only about astral planes of existence, but of reality in general. And, I am a person who is highly sensitive to things on the other side, in the astral, so much of what I say is the result of my own experience, and the one of the other two Swaruas I live with, Athena and Sophia. As I have explained before, you do not live in a density, you are a density, and you experience and live it as a reflection of yourself, in the illusion that it is an exterior world. There is not one astral plane of existence, there are as many as there are points of attention of source, as many as there are souls, who live the illusion of being anything other than source itself. So, my description of the astral, and the entities and events which take place there, are my interpretation in my experience, and may coincide with one of other people, or not, but as with so many things, it is not a question of who is right and who is wrong, as we all have pieces of the whole and they become complementary, so each one of us can develop our interpretation of the bigger picture. My friends in CIC have told me that many of you out there on social media, who listened to the first video about monitoring spirits were, somewhat alarmed by what I said. There is no need to be fearful, as that is also what they want, and there is no easy way to say this, but it is a hard reality we must all face to be able to control the world we live in, and our lives, and not live eternally as victims of all those etheric leeches and parasites of all kinds. When we are living in the so-called material world, we are experiencing a limited reality that is filtered through our five or six senses, so we are virtually blind to what occurs under that filter and away from our perception. This causes people to seek explanations and reasons to explain all kinds of events, as they say, more logically and scientifically, without resorting to, so-called, dubious esoteric elucidations. And that would be a valid way of thinking, but only from the point of view of a materialistic and deterministic worldview, because there is way a lot more out there that cannot be understood that way. As there are organizations and groups of people on the side of the living, so there are in the astral, and in this case, especially in the lower astral, as all kinds of immoral entities and disincarnates dwell there while they all go about their business that most often involves exploiting and parasitizing the souls in the world of the living. Remember that they feed on suffering, and fear is a great concentrator of creative energy, making the subject manifest more of what it fears, and more of what is causing its suffering, therefore feeding those entities as the human-created egregores that they are. This is why you must realize that they are there and that they are working against you, yet you must never fear them, rather you must face them directly, winning the game of good against evil by knowing how they work, stopping and preventing them from being able to get whatever they need to go against you. You must outsmart them. When a starseed, or any other person with a high vibration and a positive life mission incarnates on earth, the very system of the matrix will send its agents to prevent such a highly positive person from causing an imbalance in the field. 
Remember that the matrix and all its components will defend itself from anything that is attempting to dissolve it, this because it can only exist as a low vibration reality in an artificial way, and with a lot of effort. This is why so many positive people, mostly star seeds, always seem to have a person who is close to them, and who is on their back all the time, making life as difficult as possible for them, apparently for no reason at all. Without those monitoring spirits, the positive star seeds would flourish and develop themselves to a very high degree, therefore becoming a vibrational menace for the matrix, so positive people and star seeds will always be targeted individuals, targeted by all kinds of forces within the matrix who strongly wish to normalize them, to make them ordinary, and therefore, exploitable. But, many times it is the very attitude of resistance the star seeds have against the matrix, which causes things to be so much more difficult for them, things which are seen and taken as normal by matrixed people, who comply with the system. One of the most common examples of monitoring spirits is the narcissistic mothers and fathers of the star seed, who have programmed it since very young to feel inadequate, worthless, and plain broken. Star seeds fall into those families, because the matrix and the system need something to lower their capacity, yet there is a flip side to this, because although narcissistic fathers and mothers often breed narcissistic children, when a star seed comes into that family, such hideous family mistreatment ends up working as a catalyst for developing even higher empathic skills, for its growth as a positive soul. All this is within the rule that states that resistance, causes and forces development. When close family members act as monitoring spirits for star seeds, especially mothers and fathers, the trap is especially difficult to get out of, as the narcissistic parents often use manipulator schemes to get away with forcing the star seed into complying with their wishes, which can be summarized as, total power and control over their starseed children, as they feel entitled over them as if they were their property, and this extends to everything the starseed zones and does. This includes the idea of having to guide their interests to match their own, diminishing and belittling the starseed's wishes, in a clear attempt to divert the starseed from its life mission, a mission which would ultimately be to the detriment of the Matrix. But what is working behind narcissistic parents is much more complicated and a lot darker than the simple psychological explanation, as many times they literally are dark spirits, sent to lower the starseed's vibration, and to hinder and stop their growth. Where the very empathy of the starseeds works against it, as the narcissistic parents, or close relatives use sentimental manipulation to exploit the starseed from a very young age to adulthood, leaving the star seeds with all kinds of trauma. This makes it a lot more difficult for it to function and thrive in society, as the star seeds become vulnerable to other abusive people, in the same power dynamic that was occurring with its parents, as the people-pleasing mentality it has, permeates all the time to its detriment, as well as its empathy which is used by the matrix against them. Besides those monitoring spirits working as, and through close family friends and relatives, there are others which come in all kinds and shapes. They can be neighbors, acquaintances, and people you do not even know. This is also why you must be aware of who may be listening to your plans, as they can be the eyes and ears of entities sent to stop you from developing your plans. It is not uncommon for a starseed to talk about one of their plans to anyone, plans that were working very well, until the starseed started to talk too much, because right after that, his or her plans start to go sideways, and no longer advance or work. I am not telling you these things for you to be paranoid or to be afraid but for you to be conscious that the matrix does listen to what you are saying and it is also watching what you are doing, and it is a simple fact of life on earth. It listens from the side of the living, to then inform the side of the lower astral. Remember entities also must function with rules and laws, 
and one of them is that they cannot follow you into your house, into the places where you reside, including the interior of vehicles, but mostly your home, without your direct consent. This is clearly seen in the case of the Black Eyes children, who are organic portals, dark entities, and demons using the outer shell of a child to exploit your empathy and natural need to protect the young. Those always ask for your permission to enter your house or your car, and not much is known about the few people who have agreed to let them in, perhaps because few of them survived the encounter. As with narcissistic manipulative parents, close relatives, and friends, those black eyes children will not only exploit your empathy for them, but they will also use manipulative strategies to force you to accept letting them in, for example, to use your telephone. So beware who you invite into your house, living or not. And this includes accepting the presence of apparently harmless hauntings, spirits, and entities, who may be innocuous at first, but after you have granted them rites of pass, or coexisting agreements, they soon turn into terrible demons. Those lost souls and spirits have no business coexisting with the living, in the same premises, as it will always end up being to the detriment of those who are alive, as they usually do not have a deep enough understanding of what is happening on the astral side, nor how it works, and therefore are easily manipulated, and exploited. In general, it is not wise to let strangers of all kinds see what you are doing, because of all these reasons I've been saying. But above all, remember that you are a very powerful being, so powerful all those entities, and the matrix itself goes out of its way to try and stop you. You are in control, not them, but be wise and fearless, knowing that secrecy and privacy are a very important factor for your personal development and achievement of your goals. Be wise, and be strong out there, beautiful starseeds, remember that living on earth is a constant struggle and a continuous fight of good against evil. You got this. Thank you for watching my video, and for liking, sharing, and subscribing for more. And I hope to see you here next time. With much love, your friend. Marie Soiru